This podcast is part of the Michigan Sports and Entertainment Podcast Network. Go to michigansportsandentertainment.com for more great podcasts. Welcome back to another edition of Pistons Thoughts. I'm your host, Jordan Letterman, and today we're riding solo because we have to talk. The Pistons have put themselves in such a rough position. We're no longer playing the most important games of our season. We're playing do or die, this is it, nothing else matters, except these two games. Now, a lot has changed in the last few days since we last spoke. The Pistons were sitting in the sixth seed, looking like a nice schedule to close out the year, and looking like they will easily cruise to the sixth or the seventh seed. But instead, the Pistons have failed to capitalize, Blake has been hurt, and now the Pistons are hanging on by a thread to the eighth and final spot in the playoffs. You can look back throughout the season and pick out maybe six, seven, eight, ten losses that really could have gone the other way, and we'd be in a totally different spot. More recently, you look at the Cavaliers game that the Pistons lost to a couple weeks ago without Blake. If we won that game, we're in a much better spot. Any of those games gone our way? It's a total different picture. But here's the thing. The NBA season is a game of runs and streaks, and the Pistons sitting around a 500 team, that's exactly what you are. You're winning games. You're losing games. You don't go on these big runs like the Bucks and the Raptors and the Warriors to get yourself to 56-plus wins. The funny part about all of this is timing, though, because if the 12 out of 15 run that they had a month ago happened now, everyone would be going insane, going crazy, because the Pistons would be trending up, no one would be panicking, we'd be like the Magic, sort of the Cinderella story last minute, swoop into the playoffs when everybody counted you out. But that's not what happened. We went 12 and 15, and since then we are 5 and 10 in the last 15 games. Granted, there can be some excuses to be had. You know, the first two losses of this stretch were against the Nets and the Heat, where at the time, those were the two most important games of the year, and the Pistons absolutely came out flat, did not come ready, and they lost two important games in terrible fashion. They bounce back a bit, and then they come back and lose to the Cavs without Blake. There's the inexcusable loss there. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, why didn't you rest Blake against a team that you know you're going to lose to or that maybe you're going to lose to. And the thing with that is, you know, there's it's more about timing than necessarily the opponent. Sitting that Cavs game gave him three days off instead of two days off. And at this point in the season, Blake playing more games than he's played in five full seasons, you get him rest when you see fit. And I trust the training staff that they made the decision based on that. Not necessarily just looking, being like, oh, it's the Cavaliers. Let's sit Blake. We're going to win. You know, they should have won but they didn't, and that's where we're at. And then you have a brutal West Coast trip against the top three teams in the West. You got the Blazers, the Warriors, and the Nuggets. That probably wasn't going to end well. Then you come back and win the next most important game of the year against Orlando, beat Portland at home without Blake, and then you go on to lose four straight. The Pacers times two without Blake, so you kind of understand that. Blake comes back, drops 45 on the Thunder, loss. And then the next most important game of the year, the Pistons come out against the Hornets. They come out great the first couple minutes, and then it just all evaporated. So more times than not, the Pistons have come out in the most important game of the year and absolutely not shown up for it. That's not a great sign of a team trying to end a long playoff wins drought, but at the same time, that's where we are. Blake's been hurt, and that's the number one concern I have right now. The last time that Blake has played this many games was the 2013-2014 season with the Clippers when he played 80. The silver lining is that apparently the training staff is saying that this injury can't get worse. I've heard rumors that he's going to get some surgery in the offseason. I'm not sure exactly the nature of the injury, but that's probably not a great sign. But here we are right now. The Pistons are sitting in the 8th spot, a game ahead of the Charlotte Hornets who are on our ass. Unfortunately, the Pistons are now in a spot where they cannot get higher than the 7th seed, and even the 7th seed at this point is going to be tough. There's a few ways this can go down. The Pistons win out, and they're in the 8th spot. They're in the playoffs no matter what. They beat the Grizzlies, who are depleted and basically rolling out a D-League team tonight. And then they play the Knicks tomorrow night in Madison Square Garden, which I don't care what arena you're playing in. You're playing this Knicks team on the verge of the playoffs, and you need to win this damn game. In a perfect world for the Pistons, they can find a way to get that 7 spot and not have to play the Bucs, which all along I've been saying do whatever you can at all costs avoid the Bucs. 
but they've got themselves in a position where it really could be play the Bucks or don't make the playoffs. And at that point, I guess I'm picking the Bucks. So the way they get into the seventh spot is if they beat the Grizzlies and Knicks these next two nights and the Magic lose to the Hornets on the last night of the season, but the Nets also have to beat the Heat in D. Wade's final career game. That's a lot that has to go your way, but at the root of it all, take care of your business, beat the Grizzlies, beat the Knicks, and the rest is going to fall where it's going to fall. But you got yourself in this situation. The ball is in your court now. No more excuses. No more coming out lackadaisical. The Pistons need to come out tonight and tomorrow and play like the Magic, like the Nets, like the Hornets have been playing for weeks as a team desperate to get into the playoffs. You know, if the Pistons played with any of that intensity and desperation over the last couple weeks, they would have secured a spot by now and it wouldn't be coming down to the last two games of the season to get in the playoffs. In my opinion, there are a few huge things that the Pistons need to not only make the playoffs, but not get embarrassed in the first round by the Bucs. Right now, it looks like Blake is playing on one leg, and you just have to hope that he's healthy enough in these games and the playoffs, if the Pistons make it, to be better than he was against the Hornets. Nothing against Blake. Blake is leaving his heart on the floor. He's putting everything he has into this, but he's playing on one leg, and it's just, you can see he's clearly grimacing. He just isn't himself, and he can't do everything that he likes to do and that he can do because of the leg issue. So aside from Blake being healthy, the Pistons' defense needs to step up 48 minutes, and please, everybody, rebound the ball. You cannot rely on Dre, even though he's arguably one of the top couple rebounders in NBA history at this point. The entire team needs to swoop in get rebounds because the Pistons have been having a lot of trouble with that lately about getting out rebounded which should absolutely never happen when you have as I said arguably the best rebounder in NBA history on your team but in order for rebounds to be available you need to make sure your defense is solid please I am begging you as a Pistons fan step up your defense and just lock down like you need to make the playoffs and need every single stop on every single possession That's what a desperate team does. You play like that, and that's how you win these games and aren't just a joke who got lucky and got into the first round. Another thing we need is healthy, aggressive Reggie Jackson. I mean, during the 12 out of 15 stretch, he's been great. He has been great since January until the last couple weeks. It's like he's disappeared and fallen back into his passive, not entirely sure where he fits in the offense mode. And it's hurting, especially with Blake out. He is the one guy who needs to step up because you remember back to 2015, 2016, Reggie was the most important player on this Pistons team. Dre might have been the best, but Reggie is the one who led that team to the playoffs. He was so clutch. He was making smart decisions throughout the game, and he can get a bucket when you need it. Pistons need to be running some more pick and roll with Reggie and Dre, but Reggie needs to take advantage of those opportunities Otherwise, nobody's going to win these games. The third thing on my list is no hesitation Luke. Luke was huge during the 12 out of 15 stretch because he was aggressive. He did not hold back. He loaded his clip and he shot every time he had an opportunity. And that's what we need because Luke Kennard is the best shooter on this Pistons team. And with the second unit, he's so talented at making decisions, creating offense for himself and others and just providing that scoring punch when we need it off the bench. So we need that Luke Kennard back because he's sort of disappeared into the forest in the last couple games. Now the last thing isn't exactly something new, it's just Dre needs to be Dre. Dre has improved so much this season, and I've talked about it the last few podcasts, but the last couple games he's he's been a little eh. You know, he's gotten in some foul trouble, he's hanging his head more than he's hung it all season, and we need Dre to be Dre. Because he is an absolute beast and can be a huge part leading this team out of the gutter. The last thing, even though I said that was the last thing, is the shooters, if they can hit shots, this is a completely different team. I know I keep referring back to the 12 of 15 stretch, but that's when the Pistons were at their peak this season. Shooters were shooting, shooters were making. Langston has gone back into his inconsistent mode, and I I trust that he'll get out of it because of all the work that he's put in this season to diversify his offensive game. Hopefully he's hitting shots, and we need it from Wayne too, who's been a lot better since his first couple games here. But the Pistons need more of that. I mean, Wayne is one of the veterans on this team, one of the best shooters on this team. 
And I think if and when the Pistons can sneak into the playoffs here, he's going to be a huge part of that. So we just need everybody to step up right now because, as I said, this is do or die. This is no longer, okay, this is the most important game of the season. This is you are fighting for your lives. And you have two games to make this right because you got yourself in this situation and now you got to get yourself out. Let's go back a little bit to that Hornets game when we had the 4 champs in the house. Now, a lot of my followers, along with me, grew up on that team. I mean, that specifically is the team that got me into basketball in the first place way back when, you know, when they were forming those first couple years. You got Chauncey in the house, Rip, Tayshawn, Ben, no Rashid. Apparently, he broke his foot. That sucks. Hopefully, he can make it out to LCA soon. You got Coach Brown in the house, Mehmet Okor, Eldon Campbell, Mike James, I mean, it's just I absolutely love when the Pistons do these things and bring these guys back because they were Detroit basketball. You know, they embodied this team. And obviously the bad boys before them set up everything for them. But that 4 team was incredible because, and everyone always says it, they were the one team without a superstar. They were built on defense, toughness, and they had just enough offense to power them through everything and beat those damn Lakers. I did just rewatch the 04 championship documentary because I had to get over the Pistons lost that day. But I absolutely love seeing those guys back, and I, I hope that they get to stay a part of the team going forward, you know? It, it seems like Tom Gores has been really good throughout his time here at making sure that the history stays relevant with this team. You know, all the jersey retirements, all these reunions. I know Tom Gores gets a lot of shit, but, you know, he he's doing all this for us, and... I mean, personally, I appreciate it, and I'm pretty sure everyone else does too. But something that has really bothered me over the last couple days is Ben Wallace getting snubbed from the Hall of Fame. You're looking at a six-time All-Defensive guy, five-time All-NBA, four-time Defensive Player of the Year, four-time All-Star, two-time Rebounding Champ, Block Champion, and more importantly, the heart and soul of an NBA championship team. Obviously, that Pistons team needed everybody, right, to beat the Lakers. And I know Chauncey won the MVP of that series, as he deserved it. But you take Ben Wallace away, and the Pistons get absolutely annihilated by Shaquille O'Neal, and probably Kobe, too. Ben Wallace is one of the best help side defenders in NBA history, and one of the best defenders in NBA history. You're looking at a guy who won four Defensive Player of the Year awards, right? And arguably, he got robbed when Ron Artest won it that one year. But as someone who is the best defender in the NBA for four seasons, arguably five, maybe even more during his prime, and being the heart and soul of a championship team, I think it's honestly kind of disrespectful that he doesn't get in over the other guys. Now, I know that defense is often overlooked in these things, but at the same time, his impact on the game, his impact on an entire state of Michigan basketball just completely is going undervalued by everyone but people in Detroit and around Michigan, and I think that's terrible. You know, hopefully he gets in next year when KG is a part of it and all that, but I think it's absolute bullshit that Ben Wallace didn't get into the Hall of Fame this year. But I digress. Back to the current team. As I said, it's looking like they're either going to make the playoffs and get the Bucks, or miss the playoffs altogether. I would still, at this point, rather make the playoffs than miss because I do not want any of those tankers in my mentions coming back at me saying, oh yeah, told you the team should have taken... Okay, hindsight is twenty twenty. obviously. If the Pistons ended up tanking, best they would probably get is an 8, 9, 10 pick. If they started tanking recently, best they can get is a 12, 13, 14 pick. End of the lottery. Now, you're telling me, especially at this point, because a couple days ago when the Pistons, you know, were slipping out of that six seed, people were like, okay, might as well lose out and get that draft pick. So you're telling me that you would rather have a 14 or 13 pick and miss the playoffs altogether than make the playoffs and get the 15 or 16 pick? I just don't understand at that point in the lottery how some people can think that that one pick makes a difference as opposed to going to get some playoff experience for your young guys. It's also important to make the playoffs because you don't just go from 0 to 100. You don't just go from lottery team to contender in your conference in one season unless you get lucky and bring in a LeBron, but even that didn't work for them. You need to start somewhere, and if getting in and getting swept again is what it is, 
fine. I'd rather it not be, but if that's what it is, that's a step. Maybe it's a baby step. It's such a small step, but it's a step in the right direction. And you let your young guys like Luke and Kyrie and Bruce and even get Dre more playoff experience. Like These are huge moments for these young guys and can really catapult them into the next spot. We thought this was going to happen in 2015 and 16. Don't get me wrong, I was on that train. Playoff experience would catapult them. It didn't. They were dealing with injuries the next couple seasons to Reggie, and things sort of fell apart, and I get that. You know, you could say, oh, we've been here before. Just like the start of this year, the Pistons started hot. Everyone warned me. I knew it. The same thing happened last year, and look where we're at again, right? It sort of all collapsed because of injuries, which is tough. But you look back at this season and, you know, Ish misses, what, 20 games? Blake's missed a few late. Reggie wasn't really healthy till January. I mean, this team could have had a much better record if they avoided those injuries. I know injuries are part of the game. I mean, those injuries are tough. You got Ish with the groin injury, which is just a nagging bitch to get rid of. You got Reggie still recovering from the ankle injury with no basketball activity over the summer. And now you have Blake, who's played more than he's played in five seasons, and apparently that's wearing on his knee, which is, you know, what it is. I mean, his usage rate is way higher than it's been, and they just run everything through him. So injuries suck, moral of the story, but the Pistons are where they are. And I really think that even still where they're at right now, if all they can do is get the eighth spot and play the Bucks. I think that is so much more valuable than losing these next two games or losing one and ending up with the 14 pick. I just think it's silly that some people are still rooting against this team. I understand the disappointment. Trust me, I'm disappointed too. I bet they, all the players and coaching staff, I bet everyone's disappointed. That's okay to be disappointed. But to be rooting against your team to win and to make moves and baby steps or jumps or leaps or whatever, but to be rooting against that I think is crazy and I think it's absurd. And I really think that the best course of action is win these next two games in any way possible. You know, Blake's questionable for tonight. We'll see. Hopefully the Pistons can roll out against this D-League Grizzlies team and take care of business. And then go play the D-League Knicks and take care of business there. Get yourself into the playoffs. Get yourself some experience. And, you know, look like you're going in the right direction for this fan base, for yourself. And who knows, man? I mean, I've said it so many times, and I know he's hurt, but get Blake to the playoffs and see what happens. The Bucks are the best team in the NBA right now, but they're not invincible. You know, they're a little banged up. They got some guys out, and I know they've had the Pistons number all year, but get yourself there. Get yourself to the conversation. Get into the playoffs and see what happens. Pistons are where they're at right now. We got to make the most of it. It's going to be okay, I promise. Until next week... Or until next game, we'll see what comes first for me. I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for listening. And please, Pistons, make the playoffs. All right, see you all next time.